Hello again, welcome to another video of a build that I was able to complete. This one is a 10, excuse me, a 1660 Ti build. And I know in a lot of my build videos, I'm using this motherboard. I have not found a better one for the value. $110 for a B550M motherboard with the ability, obviously, with the 550M chips to be able to take on the next generation of the Ryzen Zen 3 uh, CPUs. So this build is obviously designed as a, I would say, a budget gaming build, a sub $1,000 parts gaming build, which is a great build if that's your budget. I'm using 3,200 megahertz of RAM. That usually goes for around 53 bucks. 3,600 megahertz of RAM is always, you know, better, but you also have to go up to about $80 worth of that RAM. But I was able to game on this just fine, which I, I will uh, show in a, uh, I'll link the other video in the description. Ryzen 5 3600 XT is what I use in this case because the 3500, uh, sorry, the 3600 was out of stock or it was also more expensive at other locations. So I just went with a 3600 XT and the performance does show. I was really impressed. We're using an M.2, 500 gigabytes, it's 2400 read and write speed, which is all you really need. Uh, obviously there's faster ones out there, but they also kind of break the bank. Uh, if you're doing a higher end build, I can see you wanting that. And I'm using a, I believe this is a uh, 800 watt power supply. Now, as far as the price goes in the description, sorry, in the, in, in the title, I do describe the price and I wanna make sure I'm very clear on what that price means. After everything's said and done, the parts total does indeed cost around $860. The thing to that I try to make sure you're aware of is that obviously there is a tax. I'm in Texas, there's a tax associated with that around 71 bucks. I've noticed that when I order from Amazon and other locations, the tax is usually 8.2%. So that's how I calculate that in there. And um, when I build these builds for other people, I ask for about $100 compensation. So the total for this build, if they were paying me to help them out, would be to pay for the parts and the compensation, which would bring about $1,033. But because I know that people like to see parts only cost, this is an $860 gaming PC. So it does not break the bank at all. So with that being said, and now that we've gone over all the parts, I'm going to get into the build video, and one thing I'll just say about the Cooler Master NR400, it's a fantastic case for the budget, for the $55 cost. Two fans it comes with, it's very easy to build in, plenty of place to put your hard drives and standard and your solid state drives as you expand. Let me just say that, so on to the build, and thank you for watching. All right, so we're going to start this build video with the motherboard. I've already done a few things. I've gotten out the motherboard. And I went ahead and put my RAM in first. The RAM simply just slides right in like a little puzzle piece. And it tells you right here in the bottom how to put it in there. It tells you uh, wh where to put them first. And essentially, they're put in this order because they need to make sure that each RAM stick is going towards a memory channel that's going to be on the CPU. And this is the way they tell you to arrange it. And each motherboard will uh, maybe be different. But most of the time, it's furthest away, skip one, next one, skip one, to start for, the, for dual memory channel uh, computer chips. Now underneath this heat sink right here, I've actually installed the M.2 drive. You basically pop this off, put the M.2 drive in, and it's good to go. This is what the M.2 drive looks like right there, and you just basically slide it on in and seal it down. That's in there right now, 500 gigabytes for you. Now as far as the motherboard goes, just so you understand, this is a heat sink. This is a heat sink to keep the motherboard cool. This is going to control your voltages. This is going to keep the chip on the motherboard, the B550 chip to be running cool as well. And now what we need to do is put the CPU chip in the socket. And to do that, it's actually really easy for these Ryzen AM, uh, AM4 models. You lift up the, hand, the handle, I'm gonna take out the chip, and on the chip you'll see a, uh, like a gold triangle. Let me just zoom in here. Man, there we go, gold triangle on the bottom left-hand side of the chip, come on. And that's gonna align with the triangle on the bottom left hand side right there in the center of the motherboard. It's so just going to fall right in and we're going to close that handle. And of course I'm going to put the uh, cooler on. This is the bottom of the cooler obviously. It has thermal paste on the bottom to actually paste to the top of the chip so that the air, the heat, can actually get into these this metal area and be blown away by the fan. So we're going to go and get that installed and we'll, we're on our way. So now that that is um, on and the motherboard is ready to be imp input into the case, let's go ahead and talk, talk about the case for a second. The case has um, a list of micro ATX standoffs that we need to make sure are plugged in. And that's indicated by these little standoffs here, all marked by an M. 
So I've made sure that I have all the standoffs where I know I need them to go. And I'm simply gonna pick up my motherboard, plop them on there, and it's gonna sink right in. Now what you see on the other side over here is the IO shield. This is basically the shield, the input output shield for all of your motherboard ports, which are, which are right here. And so we're gonna make sure it lines up perfectly. And we're just gonna simply stick it in there, line it up, and we'll go get the fans going. Now about the fans real quick, you can see I have one um, intake fan blowing air in here, one exhaust fan blowing out here. That actually came with a case. And I'm gonna finally put one last fan that, I, that you ordered, and we're gonna put it right here on the side to add one extra layer of airflow into this case. I think it'll be really helpful. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go ahead and get that done. And once that's in there, we'll plug everything in and uh, we'll get ready for the graphics card. Let's review what I've gotten done. So the motherboard's obviously mounted. I have my extra fan now mounted to the side. These are my intake fans, my exhaust fan. There's gonna be a dust filter on the top that we're gonna put on at the end. And what you can see is I've got my fans all connected. So the main fan's connected to the CPU fan header, which is up here. This fan has, has a cord coming around, connected to another fan header right here. I have the side fan, this top one, connected to a fan penner, uh, header right here. And on the back, it's gonna be a little harder to see, but because the fan header was so short, the case came with a, um, a power connector, a fan power connector that I can just plug in right here. And I simply have to make sure I plug in this end to the power supply, like into one of these ports that comes with the power supply, which is gonna be very easy. So that is the case so far. Now, as far as all the other things I've plugged in, I have my 24 pin power connector plugged in here. That's very easy to find on the power supply. It's the biggest one plugged into the top. And I have my eight pin CPU power connector plugged in up here. And uh, the PCIe connector that's gonna be on the graphics card, I'm gonna bring up through the hole here. So it's gonna be ready to plug in when it's, when it's time. Now, as far as the front panel connectors, you can see up here at the top, we have a power button, a reset button, two USB ports, sorry and a uh, audio jack with a, I think that's a dual audio and microphone. So what we do is we take these uh, and bring them to the front. Now it's easy actually to find out where these go because there's only one place to put them, otherwise it won't work or it won't even fit. So the USB connector goes here, so we plug that in. The um, power switches all go up here. So there's like power, the lighting, the reset switches all go in here and it tells you actually how to connect them. So I just kind of follow the, the rules there. And over here is where you put your HD audio in so that if you want to actually hear sound out of that audio jack, you can. So we've got everything plugged in. Everything is good to go. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of cable management on the back to make it look pretty. And I'm gonna close this thing up. And uh, once I get the graphics card, I'm gonna pop it right on in the socket. The time has come to install the graphics card. Um, it's actually a really nice looking graphics card. It's got, it's thick, it's got a good heat sink it looks like. And you have on the side here, you have several uh, display port panel, uh, display port inputs and also an HDMI. So we'll be using those. And it's got a really nice top plate that I like a lot. That looks really, really sleek. So how I'm gonna put this in is I'm gonna pop it in right here on the slot here. I'm gonna open this up like this. And I've already opened up these um, expansion slots here to make room for your uh, card to go in. So I'm gonna put that in now, lock it in, and we should be good to go ahead and get this computer running. And there we have it. It is now plugged in. The PCIe um, power is connected to it. It's in the expansion slot over here, and all your outputs are sitting right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it on uh, my computer here. We're gonna, we're gonna see if it posts, and we're gonna install Windows. Okay, so there's the computer. I have it hooked up to my monitor, and I'm gonna go ahead and press the power button. We have it turned on right back here. So let's see if this posts. And everything's spinning, spinning, spinning. These are spinning. Very good. That's just what we want. I mean, it's not crazy flashy, but that's fine. It's all about performance. Exhaust fan, computer fan, and intake. Everything's working. Now we're just waiting for it to post to our monitor. It should show us in the top right corner when it's um, gone. And you know what I just realized? I forgot to plug in the HDMI. All right, so the HDMI is plugged in. And let's just see what comes up on the screen here. All right, I went ahead and just turned it back on real quick, and now we're in, that's good. Looking really good. So here's your BIOS. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly um, just make sure everything's looking good. Now I'm not gonna edit the memory yet. I'm gonna install Windows and do a BIOS update to make sure everything's good to go first. But let me go ahead and get my Windows installer. We're gonna plug it into the computer. We're gonna install Windows, and then I'm gonna come to the BIOS, do a BIOS update, and make sure your DDR4 speeds are all the way as fast as they can go. Because if you can tell, I'm gonna go to memory right now. 
over here, these are the speeds that your memory can run at. It's not recognizing it, but we just need to tell the motherboard to run that. So I'm gonna grab my Windows installer and we're gonna install Windows. I have my Windows installer right here on a USB. I'm simply gonna plug this into the computer and it's, this, this is easily downloaded from, the, from uh, you know, the internet. And I'm gonna run it and I'm gonna run all your updates and I'm gonna try to run a game on it. I mean, the drivers and stuff, I'll show you where I get them, but um, we're not gonna go into crazy detail about that because it gets kind of boring, but I do wanna make sure you know where to find them. So, to the installation of Windows. So Windows guides you through this, but this is the Windows. It automatically boots up into it, so obviously English. I'm gonna say install now. It's gonna take a while, but it's gonna install all the Windows files. And uh, once that's completed, I'm gonna say you don't have a product key because you don't yet, you don't need one. Um, Windows 10 Home, and I'm gonna install it. You'll see onto your uh, Windows 500 gigabyte, well, onto the drive zero. You see how it has the 500 gigabyte drive on here. We're gonna say next, and it's gonna install onto that drive, the one that I have installed on your computer. And it's gonna install it, and then we're gonna run the drivers. Okay, Windows installed for us. So I went ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I get GE Force Experience downloaded for your graphics card. Uh, this is gonna keep all your drivers up to date, and it's gonna be a nice uh, way to, you know, screen capture your games as you go. Now, I also went to the B550M Pro VDH website, and I'm gonna get the most recent BIOS, which is this 929 version. I'm gonna go to your drivers as well and download the Windows 1064 uh, drivers. So we're gonna get, uh, we don't need the RAID drivers, but we're basically gonna get the chipset, the LAN, which includes your Bluetooth, internet for Wi-Fi and ethernet, and then audio. We're gonna make sure all those are downloaded. And um, after that, I'll just run a couple tests, but that's kind of all the boring part. So here I am in Windows updates, running all these Windows updates, making sure they get installed, getting all the drivers installed. I'll test a couple games and that should be good. Okay, I'm not gonna go into the M flash in the BIOS and we're gonna update the BIOS real quick. In here, it's gonna tell you down here the version of the BIOS that came with the motherboard. And right now it's the June 4th BIOS version 2.0. And I know that on my uh, USB, I have a folder that has the BIOS on it because I downloaded it. And it's recognizing the new BIOS 2.41. All I'm gonna do is say enter to say that's the one we want to update to. And it's going to ask and make sure that's the one I want to update to. And I say yes, because I can see it's the most recent. And I'm going to let it run. I'm going to just kind of step away from my computer, let this run, and once it's completed, we'll boot back up with an updated BIOS. And I'll make sure that when it is updated, I do one more thing in the BIOS to make sure that the memory is running at full speed. Okay, so BIOS update complete. And you can see up here, 241 on 929. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the memory real quick. And you can see here we need to be at 3200 megahertz of memory because that's what your RAM is set at. So I'm going to go over here, XMP Profile 1, so that it's reading at that speed. And I'm going to say Escape. And that should be our new speed. And we'll check that in Task Manager when we reopen. All right, here I am in Task Manager. Let's go to the memory. It is reading uh, 60 gigabytes of RAM at 3200 megahertz speed. So we are good to go. I'm going to go ahead and run the Valley Benchmark. And we are going to see at Extreme HD how this runs on a benchmark tool real quick. I'm going to come up here to benchmark. And now we're benchmarking. You can see down here our benchmarking. And let's see what happens here. Here's our final score, FPS 79.3, score of 3300 or so on Extreme Settings. All right, so let's go ahead and see how that compares to other scores. And I'll just show you a comparison to like the uh, 1616 Super with an Intel build, uh, just to give you an idea. You're you're obviously a little bit higher than this because you've got better better graphics card. So just keep this in mind. It's a you, your your graphics card's running great, and um, when we run it in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, we'll really be able to see how it performs. All right, well, thank you again for watching. If you got this far. Really, thank you for watching. In the description, you'll see me playing Modern Warfare. I have a video of me playing it, and you'll just see that I was basically hitting 100 FPS the whole time. Um, maybe a little lower at times, a little higher at other times, but um, right around that mark. So if this looks like it's a good build to you, uh, please leave this uh, video a like, and please leave any questions you have in the comments. Uh, feel, feel free to leave me some feedback. So again, thank you.